The application of ICT as an enabler has led to significant enhancements in healthcare service efficiency and the integration of health service delivery. I've seen a massive change over the last five to ten years in the take-up of technology and the utilisation in our, in our daily lives as well as in the hospitals and the delivery of hospital services. It's about speed and risk for the patient. So for example, the recovery area where patients are coming out post-surgery so to record observations every five minutes. Well, sometimes it takes them four minutes to go through the system in an EMR. So the systems have had to get much more sophisticated. One of the biggest challenges of ICT is the software is written for the, the multitudes. So if you have a particular business run a particular way and you buy a particular software or system, you have to change your business to that software or system. Because if you don't, you clash with it all the time. The requirements for operating rooms remain the same no matter how big the project. The technology and the ability for the people working in those rooms who access the information they need to do the job. And the surgeon's got the right information for the right patient in the right place. The ability to transmit information from a variety of sources in the operating room down to the pathology area where they're actually doing the frozen sections so that the surgeon can actually see what the pathologist is seeing in real time and also because it reduces our interoperative costs. The primary focus of Health ICT is to ensure that current detailed clinical patient records are readily accessible upon authorised demand by clinicians in order to make seamless, coordinated, timely and evidence-based treatment decisions for the patient. The biggest challenge we have is that it's not mandated. It's sort of a desire rather than a requirement. Its ability to collect a lot of data and collect a lot of information can't just stop with the individual patient. It's not going to be that many years from now where they will be able to compare multiple DNAs and come up with a, a trend that says your health is going to be better if you do this, 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 and you're going to be prone to suffer from this, this, this. The true value of effective system integration will evolve from an interactive and iterative collaboration between the stakeholders and appropriately qualified system designer. In this sphere, there really are a range of technologies that can be applied to glue everything together. It's all achievable if we can plan it at the beginning. Integration is a key aspect and a new hospital build has a, a large array of new uh, ICT equipment and enablers and of course that needs to be interfaced and integrated into existing legacy systems as well as the new ICT infrastructure. What we're doing is we're bringing First off, the space infrastructure, we're converging. We have one network. The next step is bringing together the server and storage. Often we're using virtual environments, storage area networks. All of this allows us to bring up the quality of all of these systems, increase the resilience, reduce the life cycle cost. What really gets exciting is when we get up to the top layer, where the applications actually live. And by linking all of these together, we can start getting some smarts. So from the catering system, we can pass information to the patient entertainment. So through that, patients can order their meals. We can have the AGV system tell the security that they need to open a door. From system to system, we can share across here basic patient details so they're not duplicated and we can really get some efficiency out of all of these systems. Another area for potential improvement relates to the lack of focus by vendors and system designers to gaining a truly representative understanding of unique work practices and service issues that characterise each healthcare facility. I think the planning process needs to be a model of care that starts much earlier. I think we're starting to look at the piece of equipment in isolation instead of looking at the total system. And now we start to evolve the infrastructure and we build the building and the systems that support it but at no time do they get up there and they say well the particular software I want to run is this and it needs a particular layout that reflects that software. People will look at how you build the building. The networking and infrastructure within the building never gets the same sort of attention. Rarely is it 
viewed at the early stage that perhaps there's another way of delivering the service in that room. So the building may not necessarily need to be the way it was previously. Bendigo Hospital now incorporates some of the very latest ICT innovation and design enhancements. Our world-class healthcare hospital is really built on four basic principles. And those principles are a very good, secure, reliable infrastructure that enables us to be able to provide the second principle, which is really mobility. Mobility for our clinicians and mobility for, for the nurse workforce, which includes patients as well and, and families and friends as they traverse through the hospital. Of course, the concept of being able to share information and have that access of information on any device anywhere would not be achievable. So the third key plank of our basic principles for a hospital would be electronic medical record. And really the fourth one is then all about communication and a unified communication strategy and plan that links and glues how people communicate with one another, either via data or voice. Crystal balling, I would say in 10 years time, we'll all have the opportunity, we may not take it up, but we will have our own personal medical recording device. Certainly 3D will allow much more robotic capability than it currently does and semi-robotic capability so that if someone can see something in 3D, a lesser skilled person may be able to complete the service. The building of the hospital is really just bricks and mortar. The building will be there for a very long time. The real functionality these days in a healthcare environment is around the technology and the ICT infrastructure. And in order to get that right, you need engineers that understand what they're trying to do, allow flexibility for the future, allow capacity for the unknown future, and design infrastructure that will deliver those services far off into the future, at least for the lifetime of those bricks and mortar.